steady of the breath in the body, front, back and sides, and then slowly turn the head. You may want to just gaze down to the mat or continue to look over the shoulder, but be careful about that feeling of over doing it. Spread out through your thighs if you are in the pose of Sukhasana. Allow your breath to travel as easily as you can. And then slowly unravel and come back to center. Take that moment to feel okay about that rotation and then repeat twice more. So breathe in as you breathe out, maybe flow the breath out through the mouth and turn left again. Sliding back, eyes are in the center, your eyes are open. Have time and patience to inhale, exhale, and turn left again. And as you return to center, do you feel anything has changed already? And as you inhale, exhale, we're going to open the left side. So slide the right palm to earth by the knee or further away. Press out through the open palm. And then release your left arm up and possibly even over. Maybe look up to sky or of course gaze to hip or into the armpit. So find a complementary pose for the neck. Lean into the elbow if that helps and breathe around the left lungs and the left side. You can bend the elbow, of course. And you might even consider just a lovely circular rotation now of the left arm. And as the arm circles and you inhale, exhale, feel the freedom that is generated around the joint and around the back, the side, maybe even you can feel this in your left hip. So we are all one holistic connected human. And let's complete, and as you come back to sitting, again, pause and notice how that has affected the left side of your body. If you're sitting in Sukhasana or cross legs, change the cross of the legs now, or just let yourself restack, make a little wiggle, roll the shoulders, and then let's come to three rotations on the right, but the first one is a little bit more of a held position as you generate that connection within the inside body as well into the prana, to the breath. So long breath in through the nose, and then exhale, turn right. So use your arms to anchor your position. No need to strain. And then slowly as you breathe, turn the head. Perhaps find a best rotation on this first one. Breathe and feel how it is as you turn right. Eyes are open. And then unwind, flow back and observe. Inhale, exhale, turn right twice more in your own time. As you unravel, make sure you stack in your center seat. And, and if you're sitting in Sukhasana, Siddhasana, Adha Padmasana, any open seat, hip opening seat, try to allow the hips to flare open or remain quite open and not necessarily just being very sharply grounded through the sit bones but essentially in a seated yoga twist of course the priority is tends to be the felt sense of the movement into the thoracic spine and that's because the thoracic vertebrae have this quality of sliding over each other they have different facet joints and different qualities to the cervical and to the lumbar vertebrae. 
when you're seated. Now going into our side opening, Parshvastakasana, left palm or elbow, and then float your right arm up. Can you sense that you're in a side bending element rather than rolling body forward or back? So notice and observe, and if your left elbow can come down with ease, and settle here. Perhaps your arm reaches way over the ear, or perhaps it's up to sky, but if you have any problems, and it's better for you to let the, the right hand just sit onto the hip, that's also fine, and you can open up maybe through the right collarbones. Complement this posture with your head and neck and eyes, in other words, Explore. Where does your head want to be settled? And now prioritize your breath. And then when you're ready, release back and notice, observe, sense how you feel through the torso. Inhale, exhale. And let's release out onto moving cat pose. So if you have a cushion or anything, you can toss that to one side. And remember, really nice to take care of knees. So you'll see I've always got my trusted yoga blanket, cotton yoga blanket. If this is a proper professional yoga blanket, so it's not one of those fleecy ones that's too slippery, it does have that quality of stickability to the mat. So draw the shoulders away from the ears, walk out into your all fours, not necessarily crowding your spine. So have some space between the armpit and the hip. And then find your breath as you stand well in the intention. Crown lengthens away from the tailbone and start to let the belly soften as that tailbone rises, flare the buttocks, shoulders back. There's no intense need to, to push your neck into a harsh extension, but do feel that you can spread out and blossom the heart center. And then when you feel ready, rounding, so pressing out of the way, perhaps prioritizing and slowing down the breath. Maybe you will look into your pelvis or your belly or even your heart center. and savouring the moving cat pose. But if you're feeling a little bit stiff and you would like to move faster, then please enjoy a faster moving cat there as well. So rolling on the long inhalation with a pause and flexing the spinal column on the exhalation, slowing down your out breath and really feeling that spine curve, assisted by light tone or energy into the belly center. But do offer a faster moving dynamic cat pose if that is what your body needs this morning. And then maybe complete that with elbows down and circling. So twisting is often turn left, turn right, of course, but also rotation brings me into the mindset of turning into a circle. And see how you feel about really enjoying rib movement here. So you, you have a movement that may start in the hips and pelvis, and then it begins to travel into the ribs. And maybe you can find um, a circular action of the ribs kind of rolling up and down and around. So can you organically create a more mobile rib basket, more mobile rib baskets as you breathe and move in the cat pose and then into what I often call kitten pose. Do keep your knees on the padded area or you can put a yoga block under the knee and step now the right foot forward and slide your body down into a low lunge. So often in low lunge, the torso comes forward and we're just allowing this soft space underneath the left hip and we'll bring the fingers on the inside of the right foot for lizard. You can curl the back toes and slide the left knee further away and you may also 
want to release your elbows into lizard, palms together. So finding pose of low lunge or lizard and surrender the breath, one hair, uh, inhale, exhale, and then lift the hips, slide back, take the knees apart and release to Belasana. So send the buttocks towards the feet and really extend through the arms or perhaps rest the cheek onto the earth. And then let's come back and step the left foot forward. And maybe you've made a, a big stride and your left heel is way distance from the right knee. Look behind you, check the softening of the foot. Bring the hands on the inside, release down into your low lunge if okay, Uttan Prishtasana. And you can always move that foot to the side. I quite like that variation where you turn the left foot out to the left and you almost get a little bit of this rocking hip opening aspect in lizard. You can clasp the palms or press the palms together or you are standing proud into tall arms and letting the weight of the pelvis just release. Let it tone on the abdomen, press the palms everyone now and then sweep back to child's pose, bring the knees apart, soften back into open child's pose, forehead now. And once again, in the pose of child, like today's practice, very pathokasical, please find that you are able to pause enough to connect to your breathing. So meditation in action and mindfulness in action is when we allow that slight slowdown. So bring yourself into the lay-by because we might be careering along that fast lane, overtaking everyone, get out of my way. But it's lovely in Hapa sometimes to just pause in that lay by, and gather all of your energies and recharge and restore. We're going to return to the low lunge or the lizard and rotate. So come up here to your high kneeling and step your right foot forward, which is what we just did. Or if you want more energy and more weight load, Rise into down face dog, right leg up and back to sky and step your right foot forward. So you have that option. So everyone coming into low lunge from the sky or from the earth. And this time as you draw the body in stack, bring your palms into heart centre spreading the fingers. Breathe in and then as you exhale lower the pelvis a little bit more if you can. And then breathe in and reach the arms up, exhale and lower the pelvis a little bit more and then turn right. So turning right and then can you please just hook the upper left arm across the right thigh. Maybe you will lower your arms or press the heels of the hands closer together and then look over the right shoulder or look down to the earth. Now if your hips are really really low and you can sustain the connection between the belly and the thigh. Bring the hands down and take the left hand down to the earth. I've got both hands down first of all, and then wrap the right arm around the back waist. And this becomes very interesting, especially for your breath. Now a breath here, and then unravel and bring both hands on the inside of your right foot. So you've still got the low lunge, right knee above the ankle, connect deeply to the ball of the big toe base and the little toe base. And as you make a fist or hand in the left, lean to the left and then release your right arm up and maybe even lean back and breathe. Both palms release to the inside. So we have returned to lizard. And if you wish, press the hips higher and slide back to all fours or to child's pose or release from lizard and rise to down dog. And if you're in down fist dog or child pose, allow breath to be noticeable. So observing your breath. 
Inhale, exhale through the nose. Make any small adjustments to your pose of child or to your down face dog. And then when you're ready, if you're remaining in down dog, left leg will rise towards the sky or behind you. Or you're in high kneeling and we're going to step the left foot forward. So everybody meeting in low lunge pose again. Rise up, palms into Namaste, into prayer full. And then as you lift your torso, double check left knee above the left ankle and then gently lower. And then circle arms, lift up, perhaps crescent moon. Extend, exhale, lower again. Palms come in and then turn left. Turn your whole torso left. Hook the right up elbow, arm across the left thigh and try to compress and squeeze and you may just stay here you might even undo the turning of the neck so you might be looking over your left shoulder to the back foot on the back of your mat and then you also can have the option of bringing both hands to the earth if your pelvis is very low therefore the right arm is drawing across the thigh bone and then the left arm will wrap around the waist. And if you're particularly strong or you have the ability to do so, you wrap the hands underneath and you create a binding. But I must be honest, I think we all need extremely long arms to um, achieve that in a very easeful way. One more round of breath. Are you breathing? Perhaps you are here. And then unravel, frame your foot, curl the back toes, and as you lift your hips, so coming into high lunge, start to rock and then step forward, adjusting your feet. Breathe in, Ardha Uttanasana, hands onto shins or softly onto tops of knees or thighs. Tabletop back, roll the shoulders away, and then exhale Uttanasana. And then bend the knees again, as you find, almost sitting, extend your arms forward, and then rise slowly into Utkatasana, check that the knees are centered, and rise up to stand. Circle the arms. Pranamasana. Blanket out of the way. So you can be anywhere on your practice mat, and I personally do like to bring the feet, toes, and thighs close together in um, poses for the chair, Ujjkatasana, the power pose. But you can also have a wider shoulder wide stance, and as you bend the knees, find that your practice is okay from there. If we're going in deep to the rotation, that means we have the capability of sitting deep into the chest. So please monitor how you practice. Arms overhead as you inhale. Or in a big Y, like yes to yoga. Exhale, Utkatasana. Maybe take the gaze to Mother Earth if you're going low. Bring the palms into heart center. Inhale, and as you exhale, turn left. Bring the bones together if you can. Stay here and pause. And then center, sit a little deeper or higher. And then circle and rise, breathe in. And salute the sun, open up. Pause to center. Observe and settle. Inhale, salute the sun or imagine the letter Y, yes to yoga. Exhale, Udkatasana, and of course stay higher if that's what your body needs, but elongate your spine 
and notice the energy at the front, back and sides of the body. If you're able to sit low, now rotate right, hook the arm across, draw the shoulder blades into that, let the hips be involved. Prioritize breathing. Be able to breathe and connect. And then unwind. And ready to rise, open, and expand. Come back to center, interlace the fingers, turn the palms above the head. And a very gentle, light Tiriyaka Tadasana, the swaying palm. So try to sandwich your ears and the head in between the arms to prevent your body from rocking over and kind of creating other twisting actions. But you can also turn palms on top and maybe explore. The swaying as the elbows move down. And then swinging out the arms when you've completed, step your feet perhaps shoulder wide and reach the arms out, warrior two star. Lovely deep breath in as you exhale, pivot, turn very purposefully to left and then just go as far as you can. Rotate, unwind, I mean, and then turn and rotate to the right, shoulders away from the ears. Notice the little feeling sense of the movement as it travels all the way to the feet. So knees are not twisting and bending around in that way that you've created something peculiar in the legs, but feel that sense of your skin spiraling, the flesh and the skin spiraling around the bones and are you turning one way more than the other so observe and stay connected to yourself eyes are open and because we're traveling a little bit slower in that movement hopefully you are not feeling dizzy and then step the feet even wider so a moderate wide stance which we would use for trikonasana the triangle and rotate the right foot out turn the left toes in and again extend the arms lift the shoulders up to the ears shrug and then exhale and release them and standing into the center so that you're radiating energy out through the fingers and the toes and then please enter Trikonasana pose, perhaps high. Remember this idea of keeping the arm out of it, so the top arm can be behind the waist if necessary. If you're capable and comfortable and flexible enough to slide into Utita Trikonasana, right hand is grazing down towards perhaps the ankle or the lower, uh, even the foot. And the even, of course, left arm can reach over your top ear if Utita Trikonasana is comfortable for you but are you breathing and is breath happening well and then bend the right knee enough to slide the left palm down to earth or a block frame your right foot you may have to walk that foot in and then pivot so that your left foot you lift the heel of the left foot and both feet face forward and definitely I would still keep that right leg bent. Make a fist in your right palm or place your yoga block under, I'm sorry, your left. So making a fist or placing the block under your left palm and then begin to rotate towards the right thigh. Turning, 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 torso lengthens sternum away from the hips and then only increase the length of the legs if that feels comfortable and okay spreading out through the toes light tone on the belly as you try to maintain purposeful paravriti this is a version of triangle 
Parvati Trikonasana. And then centering to length, soften the right knee and walk to your left and bring ten toes forward, finding Prasarita Padottanasana. You can widen legs as necessary, wide ankle standing, and you may even want to soften in and let the crown descend. Allow three or four more rounds of breath. Please, in your Prasarita Parottanasana. One more round from there. Be patient, be with yourself. Firming your legs if that's natural for you. And then heel toe in and off, bring the arms directly below the shoulders and just unravel for Trikonasana and Paravriti Trikonasana on the second side. So standing into moderate angle, rotate the left foot 90 degrees, possibly turn your right heel away, and then float your arms, warrior two style, extend. Breathe openness across your heart. Feel the power generated and the vitality by standing yoga asana. Extend to high trikonasana. Can be very light, or perhaps you travel in a little bit deeper. How does that feel for you? Find the right aspect and expression of the posture, please. Uh, what is really a lovely thing to do is attempt to turn the ribs. So whichever angle you have found in your triangle, can you revolve the ribs so there's some space and blossoming of the breath in the heart center. So fine tune your felt sense of the pose and connect to your breathing. So breathing easily. Remember we've got the arm wrapping around the waist if that's better for some. And then bend into the left knee and pivot the torso down, heart facing down, pivot the back foot, maybe come into a shorter stance. And we're going into a close twist, so we're going to make a fist with the right palm. Or place the right hand on a block. And as you turn into the left thigh, keep the left leg bent. You may want to keep it bent for a lot longer. Or you might feel able and comfortable to lengthen the legs. And can your right arm and left arm form a parallel, um, a, a sort of open arm aspect of the pose. So essentially it's a version of um, rotated triangle. I've just come to face the camera the other way. So something might be happening like this and you would want to extend through the sternum maybe look down to your right thumb or look up to the left palm that is spreading keep reaching the sternum away from the hips it's very powerfully energetic in the legs and then soften the knee the palms down and this time we'll step forward and ragdoll and shake out the head and neck and let your body drape and then bring yourself down to sitting and remember your blanket is nearby or perhaps you've got the blanket underneath you. You may even have a cushion for the heavy neck. Centre yourself on your sticky mat, feet towards the bottom and then roll back and gather your legs. And circling your pelvis. And if your legs are naturally open, and especially from the pyramid and the triangle, you have good long hamstrings, this next beautiful twist, Jatara Paragratasana, can be um, enjoyed with firm straight legs. But you may want to start with knees tucked into chest, in which case let the legs travel to the left. So the knees come towards the elbow pit, and as the legs travel to the right, the knees come towards the elbow pit. And this tucking up with palms up or down, as you roll left, drop the legs, 
and roll right and drop the legs is ideal. You can always drop the legs to a block here or a bolster if they don't reach the earth. If your legs are happy to lengthen, please remember they're not lengthening away from your body. That is when you will hurt your back. They have to be heels in line with sit bones or feet towards your forehead so that when you rotate, the legs land in this kind of triangular shape. And it's almost as if your feet can be held by your left palm and your chest remains open. So please enjoy that. You can separate the legs and squeeze both legs up to the sky and then drop up the other way and open that up and let the arm soften away. So remember that we might be using the firm and straight leg version or the tucked knee version. And I'd love you to travel left and right, hovering the legs as well as letting the legs soften and drop. So please, completing this practice now with a few more breath cycles in your Jatari Parapratasana, your revolved abdomen pose, with a good amount of due diligence in the compression of the thighs into the belly, or with the long legs extending away. Anchoring through the shoulders and keeping your chest and heart blossoming open with good breathing. So allowing three or four more rounds of that posture, practicing, embracing, enjoying. No need to rush. And then we're going to add in Setu Bandhasana, the bridge. So now center your body and place your feet flat. So your feet, of course, are aligned with your sit bones. You might wanna look either side of your body. Remember, you are supine. And arms overhead or in a T-shape. And then curl your pelvis, press through feet evenly and rise into yoga bridge, Setu Bandhasana. And lengthen from your sternum to your tail and lengthen from the tail towards the inner heels. And note the position of your thighs and knees. And are they well aligned and do you feel well balanced between the weight bear on the left hip to the right hip is your pelvis stable and stay for another three to four rounds of breath but if you are wanting to rest release your pose earlier and remain in supine semi with the body resting but with your mind deeply connected now to pranayama and to breath work so just one more round of breath in setu bandhasana the bridge and releasing from that with any amount of rocking or pelvic circling or you can roll back to sitting or please release your legs into full Shavasana. If you are releasing to full Shavasana, please lift your head and just check as you look down your body that you are well centered on the yoga mat. Please be warm enough. Maybe shake out the shoulders and roll out the legs. Closing your eyes, yielding your body to Mother Earth. Allow your mind now to drop into the solar plexus. 
So this is the energy around the back of the navel center and the color gold and yellow. You may even want to see and visualize the sun, the solar, the sun rays in the belly. You may even want to place the visual image of a candle flame in the belly. And as you close your eyes and settle here more into a heavy weighted body, feeling warm enough to be in total stillness, inhale and light the flame of the candle or let the sun rays shine in the belly. And as you exhale, imagine being surrounded war warmly from within and outside of you by a golden yellow glow. Supportive energy. You might want to imagine that your breath is creating a little soft sway inside the body as if you're lying on a golden yellow hammock. Sun is shining on you, it's just the right temperature. As you drop deeper into this moment of quality resting. What sensations are with you? Shoulders are dropping and spreading. Pelvis is releasing. What else can you let go of? What else can you unravel? Were you at any stage feeling a bit wound up like a tightly coiled spring? What has the yoga unwound for you? Can you allow more space to enter your mind, your body, your emotions. Soft stream of flowing karmic energy, flowing in through the nose and flowing out through the nose. The gold and yellow colour, healing aura inside and outside of you. A very soft rise and fall in the belly. It's a delicious feeling of drifting. Drifting on the waves and the ripple of the breath. Now enjoy one more conscious yoga breath cycle. As you open your eyes, mindfully massage your back if you're lying. No need to rush. 
Maybe roll to your side body. And then slowly, mindfully return to sitting, settling into your closing seat. And as you join your palms into heart center, bow the gaze, gratitude for your presence here. Have a lovely day ahead.